Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about the standard template library, this time talking about the Q data structure. Now Q, like the stack, which we've talked about previously, so make sure you check that out in the playlist, is another container adapter. This time enforcing a policy for first in, first out. It's sort of a fair policy, meaning that if you're at a grocery store and you're checking out your groceries, you'd want to be the first person in line. And if you're the first person in line, you should be the first person out of the line. So that's the type of event ordering that we're going to have. I'm going to talk about some different patterns that you could use for a queue, for instance. But with that said, let's go ahead and dive into CPP reference and first learn about the queue data structure. So here we are on CPP reference, and I'll go ahead under the containers section of the web page, look at the queue data structure. Now we'll also get to priority queue shortly, but let's go ahead and just first look at queue and you'll see priority queue in another video following this. So Q here, the standard Q is a container adapter that gives a programmer the functionality of a Q and specifically a first in first out or sometimes pronounced FIFO Q data structure. So again, we're going to have a type of the elements that are stored inside of our Q and then there will be a underlying data structure for that actual Q here. By default, it is a deck data structure, which we've learned about previously. And you can see that again in the playlist. So with the queue, it's going to have a relatively simple interface, meaning that we have some operations like, well, let's go ahead and just take a look at them. Push again, similar to a stack pop as well, removing the first element. And again, it's key that we don't confuse these with the stack, but we're removing the first element because again, a queue is giving us this restriction or this policy that first thing in is the first thing out. In fact, let's go ahead and write that out just so we have that in our mind as we proceed in this video. So for standard Q, it is a first in, first out data structure. Or sometimes, again, we just call it as FIFO. Okay, F-I-F-O. And again, what this usually means is behind the scenes, if we're going to implement this, say in an array-based data structure, let's say we had an array here, the first element that's in here, say one, two, three, and four, would be the, if we are keeping track of it, the sort of first entry out of here. Okay, so usually we'd have or keep track of sort of the first element here. And then usually we're keeping track of wherever the back of the line is. Okay, the last element that's been entered. If I was using, say, a vector, for instance, and I could dynamically resize this, well, as I add elements here, like five and six, for instance, then the back of my line becomes element six. And my first element is still the first one, no matter how many other elements I add in line here. Okay. Same thing as a grocery checkout line. If you're the first person in line checking out your groceries, everybody else is just lining up after you. They don't get to jump in front of the line, usually, unless there's an emergency or something. But that is the case here. So that is the policy that is given here. So this is sort of the uh, FIFO data structure, and this would be sort of be an array based implementation. Now, by default, we have a deck based data structure here for the queue, meaning that, well, for the deck, usually you have some node or collection of a few entries like one, two, three, and four. And then as you maybe push on more elements into your queue, you get another chunk of maybe four elements here. And you keep track of, again, the first element that's to be removed or the first person who is in line. And you'd keep track of the back here. And maybe you add some other entries here, like seven. And then we would, again, update where the back of our line is. So that's sort of a deck-based data structure. And of course, you could also implement this with a list as an example, where you just have nodes here. And you just keep track of the front node here, or the very head of your list here. So the front or the head of your list. And that's the first thing that would be uh, popped off of your queue data structure. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and look at some code. And then we'll talk about an application of where you might use queue. Again, these tends to show up all over the place in your operating system. Again, anywhere where you can think about having a line or an ordering that you want to enforce, a queue is one of the data structures that you think about. All right, so just looking at the code here, let's go ahead and keep CPP reference open and we can look at some of these functions here. Again, it's going to be a relatively similar interface to the stack here. 
Um, and as always, the header for this is at the very top here for Q. Let's go ahead and add Q here. And I'm going to create a Q of elements here. So my Q here. Now, I didn't show this in the other uh, previous video here, but let's go ahead and try out. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and use this the basic way first here. Let's just have a Q of integers. And I'll go ahead and uh, push in some elements here. One, uh, two, and three. Let's start with that much here. And Q's been around for a long time, so I don't need to use C++20. It's been available since at least 98, uh, but I'll just go ahead and use the latest and greatest features here. Let's go ahead and compile that much. It compiles and runs. And then let's go ahead and uh, play around with just looking at some elements here. So again, we have front this time, and we do have back here. So let's just go ahead and look at this here. So the front. And I'll go ahead and do my Q dot front. And let's put an end line here. And then let's go ahead and look at the back of our queue here. Now, remember with the stack, we only had top, so we could just look at the top. Again, imagine a sink of dishes. You can only really see the top of the thing. Uh, but if you're looking at a grocery line, usually you can see how long the line is and who the first person is and the last person. OK, so that's the sort of interface here. That is one difference uh, between queue and stack. So let's just go ahead and look at this compiles and runs. So the first item that's going to be removed is one, the last item three. And again, just like with the stack, all these functions here generally have one job, meaning when I pop or remove an element, it just removes the element. It doesn't return anything. OK, we'll see that it has a void parameter type. And again, that's something you can think about in your application programming interface when you design your own libraries. If you want things to do multiple jobs or just one job, um, Folks kind of argue about this, but you know, having just one job makes it a relatively simple interface to use. But let's go ahead and remove something. Let's go ahead and do my queue pop. And then let's go ahead and see if the front of our queue is now the value two here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, compile this. I'm going to run it in one go here. And we can see again when we remove the first item here with this pop here, our new front is now two. OK, so that's the basic idea with our queue data structure. We have some other helper functions like the size. So let's go ahead and output the size. My queue dot size. And let's go ahead and just set that up here. And we have a size of two. OK, so two entries. Now, like I did in the previous video here, we can try to uh, construct uh, in previous by previous video. I mean, the one with the stack here with a few entries here into our uh, queue here. So let's go ahead and try that. And again, that will initialize here uh, with a few entries. So now our size is five because I've added these three additional things, three here, popped one, and now our size is five, okay? Uh, now you might be tempted again, uh, you know, to do something like this, um, and it's it's not gonna work here. It, uh, it doesn't have the overload for this particular uh, initializer here. Um, now let's see some other things that we could uh, try here. Uh, like, what if I get rid of the type here? Let's see if class template argument deduction uh, is smart enough here. And it doesn't look like it It knows. It It looks like it's maybe thinking that this might be, um, well, it doesn't know what the container is. It doesn't know, is this some sort of like tuple? Or if I got rid of the one of these uh, fields, is it a uh, pair here? So it doesn't look like currently we can figure out exactly what's going on. So we do need to provide the actual type here. OK, so that's for Q. Um, now, again, because we can change the underlying data structure here, because again, this is a container adapter data structure, we have some different options. So let's go ahead and try to change this here. And I'm going to go ahead and try with just a vector, for instance. And let's go ahead and put a vector in. And again, that means I'll put in standard vector int. Again, the type here int has to match our type here. How do I know that? Well, if I scroll to the top here, again, this type has to match the uh, container uh, type here. Now let's go ahead and try to uh, save and compile this and see if our queue works with the vector interface, just like the stack did in the previous video. Um, and in this one, it seems to be complaining here, saying, hey, uh, there is an error here. Class standard vector int has no member named pop front. OK, so we've got to look here a little bit carefully again, because our queue needs to be able to enforce specific behaviors of first in, first out, meaning easy access to removing the first element um, is the key here. And our vectors aren't 
really good at that. We can sort of remove. Um, so again, here's the list of uh, functions, member functions that need to be included by a particular container in order for us to use it. Uh, and it's giving us a few here. But just to go ahead and show you here, if I open up vector uh, and I search for pop uh, front here, there isn't a pop front operation. There's a pop uh, back operation. Again, you could modify or implement some additional operations if you wanted to with the vector. For instance, um, you could create your own specialized vector if you really wanted to do that, but it's not necessarily very efficient. So just something to keep in mind there. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, again, these are the data structures that satisfy these constraints, or of course, you could implement your own data structures. If you're interested in seeing that, uh, feel free to engage in the discussion below, uh, and I'll consider uh, maybe doing a video on you know building a, another container for a queue or a stack that implements these functions that might be fun to watch here uh, but let's just go ahead and use a list then since that's one of the uh, the not default type again just to show you that this will still work here okay so if I go ahead and compile this now uh, do a recompile now we'll go ahead and see that is working just as normal of course you'll need to think about some of the performance implications meaning you know if you're doing lots of pushes and pops uh, in a row, maybe a dex better data structure, but if you're doing them sporadically, uh, maybe you'll want to use a list. So as always, you'll sort of have to measure. Now, to kind of wrap things up, I want to go ahead and talk about an application of the queue here. Uh, again, you know, something that you might do here, and I've started labeling it here with, you know, A, B, and C. Well, you know, what am I doing here? Well, maybe I'm pressing keys, A, B, and C, for instance. So a use case of first in, first out is for handling different events. So you'll see lots of libraries handling or processing events that happen. So A, B, and C, me hitting these uh, keys on my keyboard, or maybe a mouse event here. Let's go ahead and just add here. You know, maybe I do something with my uh, mouse cursor, or maybe I hit the X in the window. These different types of events here. So events are one thing that queues are often used for. FIFO queues in specific, uh, specifically because we want an order to be captured. You'll see FIFO queues also used a lot in concurrent uh, sort of design patterns, things like producer consumer, where if I have lots of threads working together, they need to kind of push the events or the work that they're doing somewhere. And usually there's a FIFO queue usually protected with a lock that's managing these things. So again, you can think about how you build on top of these data structures or wrap them. If you'd like to see a uh, FIFO queue with a lock, again, that would be something that I might be interested in doing a video on. Just let me know in the discussion below. All right, folks, so there's a few different uh, applications of the FIFO uh, queue that's built into the STL. And we'll go ahead and look at priority queue in the next video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that, as I mentioned. And as always, thank you folks for your time and attention. If you'd like to see these lessons and follow them in order, you can go ahead and sign up on my website and enroll free. You'll see the same YouTube videos that you see here. And I hope you're enjoying the STL series and make sure you give this a like if you are enjoying it so I can keep uh, finishing off this series here. And as always, folks, thank you for your time and attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.